Um, it's Ashley here with Seeds of Hope, and today we're going to be talking about creating a bouquet for your house or home and some ways to get your flowers to last a little bit longer in the vase. Um, so a lot of what I learned um, was from Florette Farms website. They have tons of resources there. If you sign up for their newsletter, she'll send you updates about free mini workshops. And this is one of the free workshops that she gave just about how to make um, a bouquet last longer or cut flowers last longer. To start off with, um, you can get materials for a bouquet pretty much a lot of places. Um, we have a little office garden that I grow flowers in, but you can also find foliage and flowers in your immediate landscape, uh, in your kind of front yard, backyard, little um, sidewalk spaces. Uh, we have a lot of lavender and rosemary growing around um, our neighborhood. You also can use olive branches, different types of foliage to highlight blooms. So, you know, you don't have to have a whole bouquet of blooms. You can use other structured foliage plants um, to fill out your bouquet. So um, I usually do that. Um, you can also get bouquets at the, you know, supermarket um, as well. Those actually come with those little packets, and I'm going to show you if you don't have those little food packets, what you can make at, um, make yourself to help your bouquets last a little bit longer in the vase. So uh, first things first, you usually want to harvest your flowers or foliage either in the morning or the afternoon, so you don't harvest them when the sun is directly on them. They're gonna be a little bit more stressed out if you um, harvest them in like the heat of the day. So early morning or evening when it's cool or shady. Uh, you usually wanna have a bucket with water in it ready. Uh, ideally you want it to be a clean bucket with clean water. Um, and when you harvest, you kinda of wanna do as much as you can before you make your bouquet. And what I mean by that is um, when you harvest your flowers or your foliage, you want to strip any plant material that will eventually be in the water in your bouquet. So I'll show you kind of an example. I have a really pretty Rubecchia flower right here and you can, it's completely clean of all of its leaves. I took all of them off when I was harvesting this. I also have some examples, let me see if I can find some, um, with the leaves still on them. So you can get an idea of what it can look like. So here's another type of Rubecchia flower. It's a little smushed because it's in a bucket full of lots of flowers, but it has all the leaves on it. You don't want this submerged in water. It will rot. It could just make the water really slushy and gross. So what I do is just pinch the top and you strip the leaves. So this creates a clean stem that once you're ready to create your bouquet, it's easier to work with. Um, and when you're snipping, you want some nice, clean, sharp scissors, or um, I have little garden snips here that I use, and you can just snip the ends off. Usually you'll cut, cut it off the plant, and then you'll snip it again when you're kind of arranging your bouquet. But you want them to be nice and clean stems. Let me see if I can find you. So I have flowers, but I also picked some other things um, like oregano. This is oregano that has flowered, and you can see I've stripped the stems off. But this is good foliage and also flowers, but this can help fill out your bouquet around your blooms. So, you know, it kind of creates a little bit more of a dense bouquet. I also um, picked some um, shizo, purple shizo, which I think is really pretty. I stripped the bottom. Um, this is like a nice, pretty purple, dark accent with the bright colors of the blooms or the green foliage, which I think is like, and you get a lot of coverage in, in the bouquet, a lot of leaves. This is an edible. It's really good as like a basil substitute. It has like a really nice nutty smell to it. So I'm a big fan of this. So yeah, it's not just flowers. You can use foliage and other plant materials Olive branches, like I said, um, salvia plants are really lovely. You know, just start looking around and you'll find all kinds of things that will look nice and okay. bouquet. Um, I have some other flowers here too that we'll go through, um, but 
the more you can do before you start your bouquet, like stripping your flowers, making sure you have nice cold water will help keep your flowers nice and um, strong when you're making your bouquet. Uh, I did pick this yesterday. Usually from what I read, you want your, your cut flowers to maybe sit for a little bit just to rest before you start manipulating them or putting them in a vase. Um, but also, you know, if it's just for your house, you can cut it and then create your bouquet. So this is just some of the plant material that we'll be using. I love Rebecca. It comes back year after year. In the fall, winter, you won't get blooms, but you'll still have like the little, the green foliage. And then in the spring, it comes back up and they come in all types of different varieties. Um, so I really like it. But let's put this back and talk about your vase, or in my case, this mason jar. Uh, I like doing mason jar bouquets because they kind of look like a little country bouquet. It fits more of my house um, vibes. And I found these on Amazon. They're little lids with um, these metal frogs you put on top. And then it just helps kind of create structure in your bouquet so everything's not flopping to one side, which is happens to me all the time. So I have this just to kind of secure it in place. So for the plant food, um, what I found online is you can make your own plant food with one teaspoon of sugar, which is food for the flowers, and one teaspoon of apple cider, apple cider vinegar, which helps kind of keep the bacteria down, like the acidity keeps like bacteria from growing in your container. So you want a clean container. Let's do this first. I'm gonna get one test. I don't know how the ratios change depending on how much water you have or how big your vase is, but we'll go with this. And I've never made plant food before. I've just put it in water and things will last, but I'm kind of curious to see if they'll last longer with this kind of little plant food. There's that. Here's my apple cider vinegar. There's that. Put that there. Oh, this was push. Okay. Just do that. Okay, so we've got my little mixture. I'm gonna just swirl it around a little bit to kind of dissolve the sugar. And then fill it up. Put that on. So now it has a little bit of protection against bacteria growing in water and has a little bit of food, um, which, you know, plants need. And you've taken them away from their food source, so this will now be their new food source. Um, you also can use, um, there's other little uh, DIY food plant recipes that I found, but this was just the easiest and I had the ingredients on hand. So, so that's what we're going to start with. Um, so now you just kind of can create your bouquet. You want to kind of re-snip your flowers. Um, just like a nice clean cut. It has an open wound there, so now it can actually absorb all of the stuff that you put in your water. Because sometimes after a while it'll heal over and then you won't be able to get that nutrients in as well. So I'm just going to start placing things. If I place it and I realize some of the foliage is hitting the water, I'll just take it out. And I'm not the best at making bouquets. They end up looking whatever. They're not, I'm not an expert by any means, let's just say that. Um, but I love bringing plant material into the house um, because it just reminds us that there's life outside, things have color and are growing and blooming and changing. And having that kind of reminder in the house is, I don't know, nice to me. And then you get to enjoy the things outside. You get to bring them inside and enjoy them inside as well. 
I'm really loving this um, oregano. It looks super airy and light. Also, too, Florette Farms talks about the different types of blooms that you would want to put in a bouquet. It's more for like market bouquets, like if you're trying to sell them. But it's really, if you're, you really want to get into kind of flower design or arranging, she has a great um, like little list of the shapes and types of plants that you would want to put in a bouquet. Um, and it's really helpful. But I, you know, I don't have access to all of those, so I'm just kind of using what I have, which will also look nice. Let's see. I'd also say oregano flowers, mint flowers, so you know if you're mint ever flowers, you can add that to a bouquet. And I can smell the oregano and the shizo. Um, oh, look at that little, I love this like light pink with the dark pink. I also have, um, these are also a great flower to have in the garden. These are Alaska daisies and they do the same thing as Rebecca. You plant them once, they'll come back year after year, um, with blooms. So, and then again, we're going to strip all that off. We have a visitor who's lurking around. Also, too, when you're making bouquet, make sure you rotate it. <laughs> it's another one of my the things that I always forget to do is look at look at it from all sides. Um, mine usually have a flat back to them, uh, so yeah, make sure you rotate your your bouquet. So we've got some lovely daisies, oregano, rebecca, shizo. I also have a couple of echinacea, which are really pretty in the garden. Also, they come back year after year. Um, I'm really jamming on this oregano. These blooms are so pretty. So yeah, I would just keep working. And you really, you can make it however you want. It's your bouquet. You're the one who's going to look at it and enjoy it in your house. So um, I would say that's kind of the most important part is that you enjoy it. Um, and yeah, I'm kind of curious to see how long this will last with the, the plant food in it. Um, and you just keep kind of working on it. And then I'll show you a couple of the, I have maybe three varieties of Rebecca. Here's another one. Same kind of family, different varieties. Stick one of these in. Oh, wow. And then also, isn't that pretty? Super fluffy. And we'll put that one back here. Yeah, because we're missing kind of like a fun flower right here. Ta da! Yeah. I'm digging that. Yeah. So again, you know, you have blooms, but you also want some plant foliage and different colors and different shapes. Um, make sure you strip your leaves before you put them in your water so you don't have gunky, gross, decomposed leaves in your water. And try out the DIY plant food. I think it really does help sustain your plants um, or your, your flowers and foliage in your container. I'd also say she also, uh, the woman from uh, Florette Farms had a great tip about um, if you have plants that have gone wilty, like this is kind of wilty, see that it's, it's called flagging when your their leaves are starting to droop, there's not as much water in your plant. Um, it's called the, the boiling water technique and you boil water and you put the wilted plant in the boiled water for like 30 seconds and then you take it out and then you just can put it in regular room temperature water and in like five minutes it'll kind of um, perk back up. So um, that's also a little tip. If you harvested something and then it started to get wilty, that's a good way of perking everything back up. So I haven't tried it, but I thought it was really cool and she showed it in her video and it did exactly what she said. So 
Um, yeah, I hope this is helpful. Uh, having plant bouquets in your home, really, in your space, really do make things quite lovely. So, um, and you know, use a mason jar. Use an old spaghetti jar. Go out and look in your immediate landscape and you will find all types of different plants and shapes and textures and blooms that you can incorporate into your bouquet. You don't have to go to the store and buy one. You can enjoy it however, but yeah, I'm a big fan of these flowers because they just come back year after year. And so yeah, I'm gonna go find a place for this in my house and I hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you soon. Bye.